last video you saw me discussing Romans 11 with my 11 year old and record the whole conversation. We talked about works. We talked about performance based Christianity. We talked about what justification means. It led me to, to remind myself, but also remind my son to go after purpose and to keep his mind not just on his talents and his skills and things like that, that he, he should develop those things, that's good, but more on his calling and gifts. I remember those years in my younger years and even going into adulthood, I spent so much time asking the Lord, what is my calling? Make it clear to me, etc. All of that, that seeking led to me discovering that my greatest calling is Christ himself. It is to know God and to be known by God. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, But in the past, when you didn't know God, you were enslaved to things that by nature are not God's. But now, since you know God, or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and bankrupt elemental forces? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? So Paul here is speaking to the Galatians because they had subscribed to, you know, a workspace or a performance-based Christianity. So they they were all about more efforts, more this, more doing, more all of that in order to feel good about themselves, but also to please God. And we see people even today doing the same things. But here Paul saying, do you understand what you have been brought out of? So when I think of calling, this is what comes to mind. Number one, my greatest calling is to know God and to be known by God. That is it. It's not the, the works that I will do. That's not my call, my greatest calling. It is Christ himself. Christ first. Because that's the thing that happened to me in my search for calling and purpose and all of that was I reached a point of being fully satisfied in knowing that Christ alone only he can satisfy he is the greatest honor and the privilege and you know i just loving him and being loved by him is the greatest thing everything else is secondary to that secondary to him so that is number one to know until you know that and you're convinced by that and you can just rest in that you will forever be searching for something else something more and there isn't anything more than that. Calling means that you're called out of something and into something else, something new. If you're not following your calling and your purpose, you know, God's will and purpose for your life, then you are probably going where your talents are taking you, where your skills are appreciated, things like that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 14 to 17 says, I know that whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor can anything be taken from it. Do you believe this? Let me read that again. I know that whatever God does, which is what you and I must go after. What does God want? What's on his heart? What does he want you to do? What does he want me to do? And how does he want us to do it? So whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor can anything be taken from it. For God does it so that men will fear and worship him, meaning all filled reverence, knowing that he is God. Isn't that what I was just talking about earlier? What is your greatest calling? And, and so if you're, if you're trying to find purpose, this is it right here. You know, whatever we do, it lasts because it's it's the lord's doing you're not trying to do anything on your own you're not uh you know going for temporal satisfaction because anything the lord has ordained for you to do okay nothing will be taken from it and you will also not add to it and the purpose of that is 100 percent clear there is no confusion anymore about what's the purpose the purpose is that whatever you do your actions your words your ministry your everything will lead to people being filled with deep honor and reverence for god in other words there will be a lasting change or transformation that happens in their lives not just being entertained you see not just a temporal oh my gosh that was so cool and then nothing changes their lives still remain the same people say well jesus himself came to serve not to be served right so let me also serve 
but now that has become your identity i'm not saying that serving is bad it is a hundred percent necessary i mean if you are a minister of the gospel you better be serving but what's the reason that you serve do you understand the purpose that is attached to that serving? Because let me read to you why Jesus served. Matthew 20, 28. It says that even the Son of Man himself did not come so that others could serve him. He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many people. Did Jesus know his purpose and what his calling was and why he uh, was here was there any confusion not at all because he knew exactly what he came to do and that's why he was serving people in that kind of a way he served people well but it was not purposeless this is why we must always follow after purpose if the lord has blessed me with a ministry today then any time that i sense that his presence is not in it like the lord is over there now Am I willing to let this, to drop this and follow after him? Exactly like Moses. Lord, if your presence does not go, I'm not going. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm listening for. What, how is he guiding me? So there's no confusion regarding where I'm headed. I'm headed where he's headed. Do you understand? So I'm falling after purpose. I'm listening for the sound of his voice. And when he moves, I move, which means I have no like attachments to, you know, people, places, ministry, things like that. I'm attached to my purpose and call. I'm going where he's going. Do you see what I mean? Everything is simplified when you get this. Life becomes so much simple. Your thinking is simplified, which is many people's issue is that your thinking is so complex and, and you have doubts, you have many concerns, you have many questions. It's always like, I have this question, I have to ask this, that question. Somebody answers one question and now you have two more questions. And it's okay to have questions. The Lord, he gives you understanding. You take your questions to him, he'll answer them. But here's the thing. Are you asking these questions with, really, with the desire to understand, receive that understanding, and then take a step in response to that? Or are you just like asking for sake of asking? Once you receive an answer from the Lord, that's it. You got your answer. Now you don't need any more convincing, you see. So if he speaks, that's it. You got your answer. You should be convinced. If you're not, <laughs> there's a deeper thing. That's for another video. Wherever he's calling you to, that's where you're headed. There's no more confusion. Even serving, I'm not attached to um, doing ministry. I love to serve. I love to serve the Lord. I love to serve people, but I understand my purpose. I understand the call of God over my life. I know that I'm not sent to every single person. There are some things that I say no to. There are some people that I say, um, I'm not sure I can help th with that. To be humble enough to be able to do that. This is important because you're not called to every single person on this planet. I'm not called to every single person, but there are people that the Lord is sending me to. If I'm following who he's sending me to and I follow his plans, then there is no stress. I'm not getting exhausted. This is fun serving people and God and I'm not attached to that act of serving. I do it because oh, it's filled with purpose, man, like I, because I can see with my spiritual eyes even before those people open their mouth or tell me what their problem is and things, I can see with my spiritual eyes what's going on in that place. And I can see what their need is. And based on that and how the Holy Spirit leads me, I'm able to teach, I'm able to share that word. I'm able to, even before they tell me, oh, you know, let me can I share my issues with you? Can you pray for me? I'm already listening for, to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. You know, sometimes it happens side by side, like the person saying one thing and I can hear from the Spirit something in regards to that. So when they are done talking, I already know how to respond to them. Do you see? Like, ah, my goodness, this beautiful partnership with the Lord is amazing. And so, so when they're done talking, I say, ah, yes, this is what the Lord is saying. Or this is how the Lord is leading you right now. Or this is why things are happening this way. And that leads me to this other thing. You, as a servant of the Lord, must know who your God is. I talk about this a lot. Because do you know your Lord as your healer? Do you know your Lord as a deliverer? Who is your God? And do you need any more convincing about this? Like, do you, are you still thinking, hmm, I wonder, I wonder, I think I know who he is. No, you should be 100% sure 
you see and so that's what just pursue him pursue his heart you should want to know who your god is and be fully convinced because guess what as ambassadors of christ and as someone who's going to be representing the lord you need to know who he is and and that also means that here's a question what's your story what's your experience with the lord and when i say experience with the lord i'm talking testimony i'm talking about do you know him are you known by him exactly what we read earlier. I'm talking about that relationship, that experience. Just like if you were to ask me, oh, what's your experience of marriage? I would tell you all the stories, all the things, the good, the bad, the ugly, all those things that, that I have experienced shared with my husband. And in the process, he knows me, me more and I know him more, right? Likewise, your experience with the Lord really matters. So when you go out to minister to people, guess what? Those are the things that you're going to be pulling from. It's going to be so important that you have a testimony and that you are 100% sure about this testimony. So here's the thing. Unless you have that, don't be rushing into doing something in the name of God. Be patient and learn whatever the Lord is teaching you before you just move on from that. It is very important to be led by the Holy Spirit. There will be no confusion. There will be no delay when you when you follow the sound of his voice, when you follow his purpose for your life. Amen.